Good morning everybody, it's me, Pickin' for Profit, coming to you with another video. Today's video is a haul video. I went to Hartville Flea Market this morning. It is uh, July 3rd, so happy 4th of July by the time you're watching this. Uh, I spent about $150 on items to resell, and then I purchased about $75 to $100 on items that I'm going to keep. Um, we'll get to those items here in a minute. The first item that I purchased was this DVD. I always look for new sealed anything like Japanese, Asian, horror, any subculture titles like that. They seem to do really well. This one they wanted three bucks. I offered them two. They accepted. This is going for about 20 to 25 on uh, eBay. I can't sell DVDs on Amazon, so this one will be going to eBay. Another really great score I purchased today were these four Game Boy games. These are brand new, still uh, in the plastic on the inside. I'm not sure if these Game Boy games came with plastic on the outside. If I remember correctly, they do not. Um, but they are brand new, so I'm probably gonna sell these on eBay just to be safe. Um, I might do Amazon if I can find out the exact answer if they're wrapped in plastic or not. But these are going for about 25 on up to $40 a piece. Um, I know this one right here, this Rainbow Six, is about a $40 game on Amazon. So I paid $15 for all four, and we're looking at about 100 bucks minimum on the lot. Good score. I also purchased this. This is why you don't buy Sony stuff without looking it up, even if you are a vet like myself. Um, I paid five dollars for this. It is going for 25, so it's not a total loss. Um, but after everything is said and done, this is probably about 10 to 15 dollars profit. Not terrible, but I thought being kind of a unique Sony Walkman or Discman that it'd be worth a little bit more than that. Unfortunately, it's not, and 15 dollar profit. I guess I have to take it. I also purchased this from the same person I purchased the CD player from. I paid $5 for this as well, and this too is going for $25 on Amazon FBA. While we were in the category of games, I also purchased this Simon, brand new sealed in the package. Um, they wanted four bucks, I offered three. They accepted. This is going for $25 on Amazon FBA, so that's a pretty good pickup. Always, always, always take two seconds to scan anything brand new like a board game like this, um, or electronic game like this. It's hit or miss. Some board games are going to be worth $5 on Amazon FBA, and a very similar game to that could be worth $100. So just take two seconds, scan it. Um, if you don't want to do it in front of the person, just be discreet about it, and uh, you'll find these as well. I also purchased these. These are two um, like mini VHS C cassettes for recording. Uh, this one is a bonus pack. It does come with a nice little strap. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any identical ones of these because of that extra strap on Amazon. So I'm going to throw these on eBay. I'll get about 15 to 20 bucks for this. I paid, it says eight, but I paid two dollars. From the same person I bought the uh, VHS tapes from, I also bought these blank media cases and CDs actually. It's a 10 pack. They wanted nine bucks for this. I offered them two. They said three. It was for a charity, so I gave them the three bucks. This is going for about 15 to 20 bucks on Amazon FBA, and that's exactly where these will go. Two really good items I found today. Um, I bought these for personal use, but then ended up finding other ones for personal use. These are just too good not to resell, and that is these power locks. Hopefully everything is here and they work. I do need to go through them and make sure. Um, but it is this power lock which I've sold these before. I sold mine on Amazon. Um, it was in better condition. This is a return, so there might be something wrong with it. I need to go through. Uh, but these will be sold on eBay, and this one's going for about 75 bucks. This one's going for about 50. Um, so on the low end, I'll sell these for about 100 bucks for the pair. Obviously, I won't sell them together. I'll sell them individually. And I paid $5 a piece for these, so great score on that and hopefully they work. Another more pick and for profit vintage style item that I personally love to pick today um, is this Voigtlander, Voigtlander Nagel maybe. Um, I purchased this for five dollars. 
The bellows are in really good condition. I'll get about 20 to 25 bucks for this uh, when I sell it at my booth. Another easy sellable item that I purchased today are these two sterling silver uh, candlestick holders. You can read on the bottom. They are sterling silver, they are weighted. They're in actually very good condition, they're just a little tarnished, they're not all dented up. So I know that I can get about 15 to 20 bucks for these in scrap, um, or I can sell them to a guy that I know that'll probably pay 20 to 25 just to keep them as candlestick holders. So I'll run them by him, see if he wants them. If not, we'll go plan B, and these will end up as uh, scrap silver. And ever since that huge Zippo haul, if you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out. I'll put a link in the descri description box below. I have been hooked on buying Zippos. Um, some of these are from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and there's even some 90s in here. So, very good score. If you don't know anything about Zippos, you can tell the dates by the font on the bottom of these. Um, you can see Roman Numo. Roman numerals. Most of the Roman numerals are from the 90s. Um, the dashes and the slashes are earlier. The blank ones are even earlier. Um, so make sure you just go to Zippo.com. They have a whole chart of date codes. That is what they are called. And see what kind of Zippo you have. I paid $5 a piece for these. Um, there are six of them. Came to 30 bucks. I asked him if he would do 25. He wouldn't budge. I showed a little bit too much interest. Right off the get-go, I already had them in my hand, and if I was him, I would have said 30 bucks too. So, um, make sure when you're buying stuff and you're trying to get a better deal on it, that you don't hold on to it, you don't act too interested, because I kind of shot myself in the foot by doing that. But there were other people around, and I didn't want someone else to snag them up, so I'll pay the extra $5. Now those Zippos will probably end up in a lot of Zippos, and I average, I'm getting about $8 per um, generic Zippo like that. Just no graphics, no advertising, anything on it. So for each lighter, I'll get about eight bucks. So six times eight, 48. Not a huge money maker, but money is money. Another couple little items I purchased. I got this baby doll for a dollar. Very creepy. Um, it is like a porcelain or a glass made in Japan. These actually do pretty well. I just wanted it as a creepy little display piece, um, so not for sale. This Coca-Cola belt buckle on the other hand, I paid $3 for. Caution, there's a naked lady on the front of it. It does have a few little gashes on here, unfortunately, which is gonna hurt the value. Um, there are no markings on the back, so it probably is some kind of reproduction. Not sure, but it being Coca-Cola, it being a naked lady, um, I think I can get about 20 bucks for this. Another great little item I purchased is this mirror. How are you guys looking? How am I looking? Whoa. This is um, made in Denmark. Usually anything Danish made is high quality. It's got a great little picture scene on the background. It isn't silver or anything, um, but for five dollars, I thought it was really good, uh, a really good pickup. I'll see what I can get on eBay, but this might just end up at my booth and being sold for five dollars. Now, one of the best pickups, in my opinion, that I purchased today was a stack of tin types and photographs. And in this stack, there was one daguerreotype. You can see here, just a chunk of glass. Um, so that was kind of cool to have in this pile. And there's about 25 to 30 different tin types in here. There's this little boy or girl, not sure. But they're standing next to a chair. So this one might be worth some money. Um, there's also ones in here that have a ton of damage that aren't worth a lot of money. But you know me, I love my tin types. I have well over a hundred to my collection. Um, and for 10 bucks for the whole stack, I'm guessing I can at least turn this in on the safe side to 80 to 100. And some easy money makers I found today is this Polaroid. They wanted five. I said, is this the uh, up-to-date price? 
She's like, no, how about a dollar? So I jumped on that immediately. This is an Impulse, one of my least favorite cameras to buy in the Polaroid series, but it is what it is, it's a dollar. This one they wanted three, I didn't even haggle, I just paid the three. It is the One Step, a very good seller. I purchased this one for $5, no $6, sorry. One Step Flash, really good seller. I purchased this one for six as well from the same person, another One Step, again, a great seller. And the third one I purchased from that same seller, again, $6 is a close up and even a this is probably the best seller for me. All five of these Polaroids I can get at least $30 for, so I'll probably lot them all together. I know my buyer will buy every single one of them. I also purchased this Winston Zippo. It says Winston Winners if you cannot read that. It is brand new sealed on the back. And it is date code DX. So if you go to the Zippo website, you can figure out which uh, year that is. But I'll give you a hint. I believe it's in the 1990s, possibly early 2000s. Um, I'm guessing I can get at least 30 bucks for this. I purchased this watch fob. It's gold fill. I paid a dollar. It's worth about 10 to 15. I purchased this beautiful set of sterling silver rosaries. Mark Sterling on both pieces, really nice. Came with this cool little case. I paid $10 for this. I tried to haggle with them down to eight. The lady would not budge. Um, she was a good haggler. And uh, I ended up paying the 10 bucks for these Sterling Silver ones. I believe I can get about 30 to $50, no problem for this set. I also purchased one more tintype right here. I paid $2 for this from a friend of mine at the flea market. They had a whole stack of them. They wanted five bucks a piece uh, for each one. I ended up getting this one, like I said, for two. The reason I chose this one out of the whole stack, maybe you'll be able to figure it out. I'll give you a few seconds. Leave it in the comment box below um, before I say why. Doo -doo. All right, so the reason I chose this one, um, hoping that some of you guys guessed, but if you thought that someone's hands were holding her still, you would be right. You can see right down there in the corner, that does look like an African American hand. There's black over her face, and she is draped in a blanket holding the baby. They would do this when the babies were fussy, when it's hold still. Um, so that probably was a slave um, or a homekeeper, not sure the proper way to say that, but it was the era in the late 1800s, so she probably was a home slave, and um, it's a very collectible photograph because of that, not just because she's a slave or a home slave or a nanny or whatever you want to call it. Some people just collect... Um, people under blankets holding babies, which seems weird, but it's true, people do collect that. And then on top of that, her being Native or African American um, just adds even more icing on the cake. So make sure when you see tin types that you're looking for small things like the one I showed you before with the boy standing in front of that chair. That chair could be one of the rarest chairs in the world or very hard to find chair nowadays and the person that collects that chair wants that photograph sitting on a table next to that chair. So just do your research, use your brain. If something in the photograph is off, there's someone in there smoking something, there's someone in there holding a gun, something that anyone can collect or that's kind of weird, pick it up. Those are the reasons some photographs sell for hundreds and others sell for dollars. So pro tip of the day. And before I show you the last two items that I found today that are really amazing, I also bought some military shelves. Um, I bought six of those for $2, and I bought a huge box of locks and door handles for my new project, which I will tell you more about once I know everything clears. Um, so 
So the two items I purchased right here, one is this brooch. It's copper, it has an acorn. When I first saw this, I said I have to have it. It's so ugly, it's gotta be something special. Um, I flipped it over, read the name on the back. It's R-E-B-A-J-E-S. I'll look that up on eBay. His pieces or her pieces um, bring several hundred dollars. So I'm guessing I can sell this on eBay in used condition for about a hundred, maybe two hundred dollars. Again, when I purchased this, I didn't know that. I purchased it because it's ugly, it's copper, and it was a brooch with a signature on the back. So I'm not telling you to do that on every piece, but definitely if you can get something for, I paid two dollars for this, if you can get this for two dollars, take a chance, use your instinct, and uh, great pickup for two dollars. And the find of the day, actually the find of quite a few days, probably the find of this year, as far as jewelry goes, is this fox brooch right here. Hopefully you can see this. This is reversed cut glass. It's got a fox on the inside. Believe it or not, that is why I purchased this piece right here. I thought the fox was really cute. This definitely looked gold, but I thought it would be gold fill. Upon further inspection, it is marked 14. The older the pieces, um, they didn't even bother putting the K. And it has like a trident or something on there. Plus the locking mechanism is very intricate. I'm not sure if you're able to see the detail on the lock mechanism, but anytime you see old jewelry and they put that much time and skill into keeping the pin closed, you know it's a well-built piece. So upon talking to some people that actually have knowledge in this stuff, they believe I can get about three to four hundred dollars for this piece. I paid a buck for it. So again, it was purchased on instinct, it was purchased on a little bit of knowledge, and it was just purchased on little bits of information that I knew that I put together and got lucky. Like I said, I purchased it because it's a fox. Foxes sell really well. I purchased it because it fell and looked like gold. Um, I assumed it was gold fill. Turns out it was gold. And I purchased it because the locking mechanism was so well made that I knew it was a, a good piece and it turned out to be a great piece. So I'm gonna do some more research. I might throw this on my first, 19, or my first 99 cent auction. Um, the person that suggested me to do that does that on a lot of really good items. It just stirs up a, a big buzz. So I might try that since I literally have 99 cents into it and I'll let you guys know or if you watch my next video on what my sales video, you'll see this on there for sure. So that is everything I purchased from Hartville today. Like I said, I only spent about 150 bucks on items to resell, which I think is really good since I can turn that into probably a thousand. Um, plus, I did buy a lot of personal items that probably saved me at least a few hundred dollars. So that was also a huge score. At these flea markets, it's not always about picking to make profit. It's about picking to save money. Saving money is one of the easiest ways to make money. Um, let that stew in your brain for a little bit. But I had a great time today. The weather was amazing. I met some great people and that's what this flea market life is all about. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If there's any knowledge that you know that I obviously didn't by you watching this video and catching me on, please leave it in the comment box below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, please just click that subscribe button. It's not that hard. It helps out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.